Hi, Aru. How are you doing? I'm good, Tala. How are you? I'm very good. Um, weather's been a bit down today, but um, we're getting closer and closer to the season, so that's a good thing. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Now, we're looking forward to getting cracking. It's a bit strange, really, to be uh, in the middle of May, nearly coming on the end of May and not have the season start. Yeah, <clears throat> strange times indeed. Um, so, Ru, um, tell me a bit uh, about what you guys have been up to since the end of last season. Um, obviously, COVID restrictions in place, we couldn't really train and stuff. But um, have you guys been doing anything outside of that, personal fitness or anything like that? Yeah, we, we put a big emphasis on personal fitness, especially uh, post-Christmas, really. You know, there was a, a quiet period after the season ended, and as there always is. But then come January, we set up a Strava account, you know, got everyone involved mm -hmm. in running we set little challenges you know we set up teams got people in, in back and in, involved in the the whatsapp groups and the like just build a bit of club spirit and camaraderie and i suppose that was the first aim was you know mm -hmm. everyone was still in lockdowns everyone was separated still wanted to have that team spirit like strong but then also it did tie into a lot of personal fitness and i mean i know just speaking for myself that like i saw my my uh, kilometers per hour as it were, increasing as, as the weeks progressed. And it was it was good to have that kind of challenge and that kind of camaraderie involved in it. Awesome. Um, and then now, obviously, we we're, we're allowed to go back outdoors. Are you guys back training? We are, yeah, we are. No, we're hard at it. Um, we've had, I mean, three or four sessions now. And, um, I mean, just making up any time that we can. Like, lads are very, very keen to get back out. And why wouldn't they be? Um, it's just a case now of the weather holding for us, but uh, at the moment it has been and, and it's been good intensity. That's good, that's good. Um, <clears throat> so tell me a bit uh, about the teams you have this year. I'm right in thinking you have uh, five teams uh, this year? Yeah, we do have five teams. So, I mean, we, we've continued with our fourth team, which we set up just a couple of years back, um, mm -hmm. which has been very much a, a, a sort of a testing ground for our young players. It's almost always, um, you know, 15 and under, with um, a couple of adults really to mentor them. And that's worked very, very well for us. It's fed nicely into our third team who have, you know, there's a few stalwarts there that just continue turning up season in, season out and just holding the club together. Um, and then our second team, I mean, our second team has, has um, had a lot of success in the last couple of years, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's major contribution has been really towards building on the, the um, young players that are coming up through the ranks and into the first team. So, I mean, our first team this year, we have two teams, we've won, in Munster and then we won in Leinster and it really is the fruits of maybe a decade or so of, of hard work behind the scenes to get a lot of young players a lot of homegrown talent ready um, that we'd be able to start pushing for uh, trophies in in Munster I mean we had some very very close matches last year we we've had a couple of runners up in cups and in leagues and things like that but we're we're pretty keen to um, get over that hump I suppose you'd say and move from second place to first place and then a, a, a big thing for us this year is that we're going into Leinster, um, which will be, it's an opportunity for lads. You know, a lot of lads, um, Matthew Brewster and Adam Hickey, Jack Fosk, you know, I keep on naming names. The lads who have been proving themselves over the last few years in the second team and are starting to be ready for the first team. And now this is sort of the next step for them. Um, and I mean, for myself as well, like it's a challenge. To, it's always a chance to go up to Leinster. Uh, it's, it's always uh, an opportunity to, to improve your skills. But I mean, it is a challenge. And then for for Leinster, um, obviously this has probably been a few years in the making. But what division will you guys be competing in? Um, it's division. Well, it's division four. I think I'm a little bit confused with the the way the divisions work. I think it's division four in a way in old money. Um, of course they've changed its Premier and the like there. But yeah, nice. so starting off in division four um, against a lot of good clubs, and you know we're playing YMCA a lot of like their. It'll be a lot of their younger players um, in their, in around their third team, YMCA, Marion, Plantarf, you know, it, strong teams, really good grounds. I mean, it's a big opportunity to play on, on top quality facilities and um, really just start learning, learning, you know, maths, like map pitches. They can be quite uniform, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, each ground will have its little quirks like YMCA, beautiful ground, really takes spin. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas somewhere like, Plantarf tends to be a bit more of a seamers pitch, that kind of way that lads will have to figure things out for themselves on the ground. Of course. Um, and then we'll say um, in Leinster and then Premier Division, um, are you guys looking to have like separate teams or is just gonna, everyone just going to heads down and playing as many games as possible? Um, I mean, it's a good question. I suppose it'll be a little bit of mix and match. 
there mm -hmm. is a natural bit of a split that some lads are only available Saturdays, some lads are only available Sundays. So, I mean, that makes it straight away that they're going to be two separate squads. We do have two separate captains, so I'm going to be doing Leinster. And yeah. Matthew Brewster is taking on the reins for the Munster team, which is, I mean, it's a well-deserved step up for him. Um, mm -hmm. He's so far, I mean, just behind the scenes, he's doing a lot of hard work. And he's really uh, shown a lot of, taking a lot of responsibility on. So this is a good opportunity for him. But yeah, we've, we've, we've had to strengthen our squad a little bit coming into the season because it will be an extra challenge for people. Um, so we had a, a couple of join us within Munster or from clubs within Munster. So Shivam has come to us from UCC, a very, very talented wicketkeeper or batsman wicketkeeper. Mm -hmm. um, and then Brandon Kruger, the um, batting, all, batting and off-spinning all-rounder. And so, I mean, that, that gives us immediately, it gives us depth in, in terms of our batting. It gives mm -hmm. us another wicketkeeper. And uh, Brandon offers us some very, very handy offspin and a different type of offspin gives us, gives us something else to work with. And then we've also had Dewan Matha from uh, Phoenix. He's moved down to Cork and he's joined us as well. And I mean, he's another skillful batsman mm -hmm. and handy little all rounder as well. So, I mean, particularly in our, in our batting, where um, we've, we've really strengthened. I mean, our bowling has been, I suppose, our strength for the last few years. And mm -hmm. last year, we did see more batsmen step up to the plate to contribute. Different format, T20s, but still great to see. But now it also means that we'll have a, a lot of challenge for places, really. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good to hear that um, <clears throat> people making moves and um, looking to play, play you know, at a higher level. Um, and then tell me, uh, I suppose, on the youth side of things, um, I know you guys have a very good uh, youth structure there, but could you maybe take us through it briefly? What kind of age levels you have, um, under 13s, 15s, that kind of thing? Yeah, well, I suppose it starts off uh, around the seven age um, bracket. Like we get get people in young, um, and then you know under under nines, under elevens. I mean, the big focus then obviously is for for age cricket, thirteens, fifteens, and seventeens. Now, I mean, we'd be strongest. You know, traditionally um, in our youth section, we we we've always strived to produce our own players. And I mean, mm -hmm. again, this year, I, even with you know COVID and the effects that it's had we're still seeing a lot of young players, you know, making that graduation. But the way we work it is Monday nights is kind of under 13s, Wednesdays, under 15s, under 17s and the like. And then they join adults trainings, or this is traditionally how we've done it. And we've seen a lot of lads move up from that Monday night to that Wednesday night, say, mm -hmm. and then take the progression on into playing adult matches in the, the four teams. So no, we're, we've started up those sessions. I mean, those have been going since late April and there's great enthusiasm. I mean, we're seeing the numbers slowly and steadily increase. And I mean, that's, it's very, very promising. We're always getting a couple of new lads into the, the adult teams every year. And I mean, that's, that's the way the club thrives. Like me, if you want to survive, you, you kind of get players in and, and um, build up your, your adult teams, sort of, I mean, kind of through, through blow-ins or um, lads who are just temporary. But if you want to, to really thrive, it's really got to be through the youth section. I mean, it's, it's 10 years of hard work that's been put mm -hmm. in. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of lads behind the scenes that are to thank for that. There's Kingsley Jones, um, there's Chris Hickey, John Buss, Ted Williamson. I mean, like there's, there's a lot of names I could go through who really deserve a lot of thanks for, for bringing us to where we are. It's, it's great to hear, actually. Um, and then actually just on your, on your ground, um, I know uh, Joe, John and Chris put in a lot of work there, but uh, mm. how's, how, how's it looking? Are we, are we set to go for the first weekend? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've had a lot of work in the outfield this year we've i mean we've, we've prided ourselves on having quite a quick outfield it's quite a high scoring ground being small enough boundaries as it is um mm -hmm. but i mean we did a we put a lot of work in verti draining it and um scarifying and the like to really get it in as as top condition as we can and i mean as you say there's chris joe john richard these lads all put in hours and hours at the the wickets and it it bears fruit it really does bear fruit i mean we've we've managed to play on more pitches now in the last few years than i ever did in the first couple of years of my, my career in Quinns. And it's a pleasure to do so. It's a pleasure to be able to play on, on real pitches on your home ground. And it's a, again, it's a good challenge for our younger players. Excellent, excellent. Then I suppose um, <clears throat> just the club as a whole, what are kind of the, the aims for the season? Um, I know obviously, you, you know, you want to win every game, but like, are you looking to do things outside that as well? Well, there's, there's always things you want to do outside. We, we, we do pride ourselves on being a very cohesive club. And it means from the, the under nines to the first team, there's always going to be a bit of interplay. We like to get the first team in for um, to help out at blitzes and the like. And lads will come along to Monday night sessions to help with the youth coaching. And I suppose then, like for each team, there's, there's a slightly different challenge. Like our mm -hmm. fourth team, as I said earlier, is really 
it's it's a testing ground. It's an opportunity for young lads to really push themselves against adult teams and um, to to develop the games. And I mean, like we look at just just a couple of um, lads that have come through there. I mean, there's Jackson Gilbert and Barry Voss who are really pushing through, and then behind them there's um, there's Kanish and the likes. Um, and the, then the Connollys. I mean, they, they really are pushing lads in the second team and the third team, um, and and I mean, challenging them. And you, you want that mm. that bit of challenge. Like again, you want that cohesion. But in order for that to the club to really progress, you also need that bit of internal challenge. And I mean, again, that's then for us to manage that. And a lot of that then is through building that camaraderie off the pitch, having the quiz nights, having the barbecues getting people involved for fundraisers. I mean, there's a really generous community around it. And it is, in my view, it's a community. It's, it's a cricket club, yes, but it's also a community. And, and I suppose our goal for, for this year, we want to win every league. Um, we want to win the, the first league, uh, first team league for the first time in a couple of years. We have the players to do it. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be nice. I believe we'll be hopefully getting back to 50 over cricket at the end of the year. Chance to prove ourselves in that arena. Um, and I mean, that's that's what we're here for. We're we're here to to win, and we're here to do so as a club. Excellent. Sounds like um, exciting times for Quinns as a whole, right? From you know your your first all the way down to your fifth, and even your youth section. Um, I think we should have fixtures in the next week or so, and uh, hopefully there'll be some 40, 45, and fifty over cricket there. But uh, fingers crossed for that. Um, Ru, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, <clears throat> I really appreciate the. Uh, you come and talking to me today. Um, it's good to get an insight into how Quinns are doing this year. Obviously, playing in Leinster is a massive undertaking logistically, and then you know, obviously, play, you know, you need the players for it as well. And it's good to see that clubs are entering um into the Leinster leagues. Galway have are going to be entering this year as well. So it's good to see that there'll be three representatives from Munster, um, show that you know what, what we have. Um, perfect. So um, thank you very much again, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Tala. Talk to you again. Thank you.